Hello all you gorgeous people out there, how are you? Today I'm talking about the Great Awakening and has it come to a standstill? Are we plateauing? Have we hit a plateau? Okay, I'll tell you all about it on the other side. So I'm aware that kind of the pressure seems to be off a little bit. Can you feel that? Like, you know, oh, they're trying to mess about with all of the, the monkey stuff, you know, monkey business and all of that. But generally the pressure's off. There are lots of, um, how can I put it? There are lots of, they're shooting lots of shots across our bow. You know, they're, they're trying to keep us frightened, clearly. But the pressure in and of itself has, has eased. The impression that that gives is that, therefore, the Great Awakening that was happening in earnest has eased off, has kind of stopped. So I thought, while I was meditating, I asked the emissaries, you know, have we hit, have we hit like a flat spot in the Great Awakening? It seems like everything's settled down a bit. And they said this, it's the plan space demic that has eased. The Great Awakening hasn't eased. The Great Awakening is continuing as it always will continue. What they said was that the, this period of calm, if you want to call it calm, I mean, it's not exactly super calm. I've had calmer moments. But this period of, of quietness is going to be a period in which people are going to start to investigate. They're going to use this kind of, this the dust settling to say, well, what on earth has just happened? and reflecting back. And obviously there's a lot of information that's coming out from all over the place. The internet's filled with information about what really happened. It's all there. It's just at the touch of a button that it appears. So they were saying that this is going to be a period of time where there's going to be some consolidation within humankind of like, right, I'm, I need to look and find out exactly what happened here. And obviously there are loads of other stuff that's going on at the moment that are making people question. What they said was that the the COVID is only a tiny part of what really is the Great Awakening. It's just a small part. All right, it accelerated stuff. It did like jump starts, didn't it? It was great for that. But they said that there's, there's a great revealing happening now. We're in this, you know, the, the light keeps getting brighter. We're in a period of great revealing. And so more and more things are going to come to light. What they're saying is that because of the way that the energy shift is happening, the light's getting brighter. Evil, dishonesty, lies cannot be hidden. They must be revealed. This is ever so important for us to understand. There is no choice. They must be revealed. They must come out. So everybody at some point is going to have to see. Now, it's their choice after that what they want to do with that information. Some people will see the information and say, I don't care. Right? I mean, we, we've, we've all met those people. We've all met those people. I don't care. I'm not bothered what they say. I'm going to continue doing what I do and believe what I believe. However, many people are not because it's going to be there. It's going to be there in plain sight. Okay. So that's what they're, they're saying to me about that we're not hitting a flat spot. We're actually just on the next stage of this great awakening, which is inevitable. There is no turning back. You remember when we were talking about the difference between destiny and fate? Right? Destiny is what we choose to do within our life and what happens and fate is what's going to happen there is no alternative and the great awakening is in fate it isn't in destiny there is no alternative it's what's going to happen so they emphasized it they said there are no flat spots in the great awakening there are no plateaus in the great awakening it's a process it's a process that must come to its finale so that's nice to know it doesn't mean that we um, don't need to act. You know, just because we know it's gonna happen, it's that, you know, what we were saying last time, we can put up, we can tolerate just about anything 
as long as we know that it's going to be all right. And that's what they're saying is, it's going to be all right. So whilst we are here and tolerating it and, you know, let's make something of this life. Let's really do something. There is no need to be waiting for the paradise. There's no need to be waiting for the golden age. Don't wait for it. I was reflecting the other day on my childhood and being brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. And, and the witnesses have, since the very beginning said the end of the world is coming like now. They've always said that. And when I was a kiddie, because I hated being a Jehovah's Witness and I just wanted the world to be filled with just us. I was very happy for people to die, you know, in the billions. I was f comfortable with that because I just needed the, you know, the paradise to come. And I used to ask my dad all of the time, but when, when, when is the, the end coming? When's Armageddon coming? And he always said, it's just around the corner, son. Five years tops. Right, and I was five, six, seven at the time, five years tops. Now he, my dad's in his 80s. My brother, who's also a super duper witness, you know, supercharged with his cape on, um, he is now 60. And so this just around the corner, just hang on, just hang on, it's round the corner, is not a great way to live your life. I see what, what it does to them. Because when it's just around the corner, what what do you do? Well, you're willing to compromise. You're willing to give up a major part of who you are because it's just around the corner. Just wait, just stay calm, yeah? No, that's not what our job is. Our job is not just to wait and stay calm whilst it all gets sorted out. No, our job is to sort out our stuff, sort out what we can get it really running smoothly a well-oiled machine that's what we have to be a well-oiled machine and when it comes all the better because when it comes we are going to have to look back on what we did we're going to have to reflect on what we did and the question is going to be whilst that was happening what was i doing what did i do that I can be proud of? What did I do that, that really made the difference? What did I do to help other people? That's what we're going to be re reflecting on. If we look back and say, well, actually, I just hunkered down in my bunker. I never went out and I did nothing. Just waiting for the end to come. You know, that's nothing to be proud of, is it? That, you know, you're not going to get a medal for that, are you? That's not a good campfire story, is it? And remember, we are going to be the ones who are going to be asked to tell the stories around the campfire, around the, the dinner table. Tell us what happened. Just like I used to when I used to talk to my grandparents who, who lived through the Second World War. Tell me what it was like. That's exactly what's going to happen. We need to be building our stories now. We need to be getting our stories sorted so that we've got a beautiful story to tell. And many of them, okay? And, you know, we are the underground. We are the resistance. There's always been a resistance every time. We are the resistance. And so we need to have some good stories to tell. So start working on your stories now. And remember, we're not in a flat spot. It's on the up and up and up and up. There's only one way to go and everything's fine. All right. I love you all. See you later on. Bye-bye.